Hi and welcome to Puzzle Book Compiler. I'm the developer Ron Pumphrey. In this video we're going to be going through and showing you uh, the dashboard of the Puzzle Book Compiler version 2.2.6. On the left hand side here you can see all the things that we've added and the latest one uh, we've added is the image pool map. So you can now uh, select whether you want to uh, compile your a puzzle book with uh, PNG format or images or JPEG. And the other thing that we've done is we've added the reposition images and resizing the images when you've uh, created your PowerPoint uh, uh, template. And last but not least is the new EXE that we're combining the software into now has a save as uh, templates so that you don't need to, um, you know, re keep on uh, setting it up, especially if you're going to be doing a series of books, which I'll go into as we uh, get through the video. So in the meantime, let's go to the folder that we've got the software in. Now you would have uh, downloaded the uh, compiler zip and you'd unzipped it, so this. You get this uh, low content puzzle compiler exe. So we're going to double click on that. Yes, we do want to install it. And you'll get this uh, dialog box here. So just click yes. And then we'll go on to I accept the agreement. And then we'll go into next. The folder doesn't exist, so we want to create it. Then we'll go into next. Create a quick uh, launch icon as well. And then we'll install the software. And we'll, well, yes, we do want to start it. So this dialog box uh, comes up now. As I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we can save templates, and I've actually done that. So this is why it's actually showing uh, choose the save template or the last save template. Uh, you'll always have the original workbook if this is the first time you've opened it up. So we'll click on the original workbook. So we're now loading the a workbook and let's shift it over so that we can actually put it inside the video. Now, it's pretty intuitive how to use this uh, software really. Uh, but anyway, we'll go through. Book number is if this is the first time you've used the software, then leave that as one because you're creating your first book. This is the number of puzzles that you want to have in your puzzle book. So Let's say we want to have um, like 200 puzzles. There we go. Um, so with the puzzles of one page and solutions one per page, your book size will be 403 pages. Well, that's a bit big. We don't want to do that. Let's say we want to use um, the 8x10 template. So I'm forward thinking here. So we'll want to have four puzzles per page. So you can see now. It's reduced down to 253 pages, uh, but solutions, I'm sure we can get away with just six on our per page. So now our book size is just 87 pages. Now a little bit more about the starting image and last image. Don't play with these because this is automatically adjusted by the software. So if you start changing numbers in here, uh, you just have to uninstall and reinstall the software again. So. What this is actually telling you is in the puzzle path and the solutions path, you need images from 1 to 200 in those particular uh, paths, okay? So once you've actually uh, filled this all out and you've created your first book, uh, you can actually go to your second book. And what that does is it just tells you now that you need to have image 201 to 400 in here. And then you can just uh, click on that and create your next book and so on and so forth. So if you're going up to uh, five books in your series that you're creating, then on the fifth book, you'll need to have uh, eight images from 801 to 1000. Obviously, if you change the number of puzzles per, per your book, so let's say that we wanted, um, you wanted to put 280 uh, puzzles in there, then it changes the book pages to 120 and obviously the number of uh, the numbering for the images uh, will change as well. So if we go back to book one, 
book one, you'll see that we now need images from 1 to 280. Okay, so let's get into creating our puzzle. So I've actually done a bit of cheating here. Oh, no, I haven't. So let's... I thought I'd actually saved the directory where my puzzles were, but I haven't, so I'm going to do it the long way. And down to puzzles, 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 down there. Sudoku and demo level one puzzles. Now, when you click on the puzzles, don't worry that there's nothing showing here because the software is only interested in the um, directory structure to get to your puzzles. So we click OK, and then on solutions, we know we're in the right folder, so we just click the solutions. Then we want to go and get the PowerPoint template. Now this is not the Microsoft uh, PowerPoint EXE. This is the uh, templates that are supplied. So we go into here, go to Sudo, go, go to 8 by 10. Now at this point we can just uh, click the pile, compile puzzle. That will bring up the PowerPoint uh, template that we selected. And you'll see that I've left a border in here and crosshairs um, horizontal and vertical. Uh, you'll see why I've done that in a moment. So we'll go through and it actually uh, creates all the slides first and then it'll come back and pre-populate with the uh, images for your puzzles and solutions. So I must have left this as a rather big book and we can check to see how many pages. Yeah, so I've left this as 120 pages, so that's um, so it's got to go through and do that first. Oh, a specified file wasn't found, of course, because I've only got 200 puzzles in those in that particular folder. So that's a good thing. You've seen a bit of an error here. So we'll go back. Because we're going to do this as a demo, then I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about leaving it that high. So uh, on 30 puzzles, four and six, it's only 16 pages, which is a lot better for you to to watch rather than watching paint dry. So let's go ahead and do this again. So it won't take that long, seeing there's only 16 pages for each altogether. All right, so now the uh, Excel icon uh, flashes in the taskbar. It says your puzzle book's been created and compiled, so that's great. We'll get rid of that. Now we'll check the uh, puzzle layout. And you'll see that these ones here could do with going up a bit higher. These ones here need to be lowered so that you can actually see uh, the puzzle number. So how we do that is we go back into your software and we select the 4-up and we select 8 by 10. So we're looking at uh, right, raising the top two. So that's these ones here. So let's do that as um, 60. This is all a guess, remember? And then we want to shift uh, three and four further down. So let's let's do that at uh, 385 and 385. So once we've done that, we can close this template, PowerPoint um, template, and then we'll go back to data and just recompile. So it goes through and does the same thing as what it did before. Right, so now let's have a look here. Uh, looks like the puzzle number. Oh, that's why we can't see it. So we'll have to uh, adjust that in the template before we actually compile. So let's go do that. Let's go find that um, template. C 
TV code. Height by 10. Okay, so while we're in, in this section here, um, we might as well have a look at where you can do your customizing. You can leave this as it is. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it because if you do that, then everybody's going to have the uh, beginning of their uh, puzzle book exactly the same as yours. So you can actually uh, shift this down a bit. You can change the wording in here if you want. Make sure you do change the, uh, you know, it says the company name and the year. Uh, and just format everything in here or customize it to your heart's content. This one here you can leave as is if you really wish or if you've got a different uh, description of what Sudoku is and how to solve it then that's fine. Uh, on here the, the uh, solutions page I should actually put that as XXX so that when you've actually uh, compiled your, uh, your book then you can actually go and have a look where the, the solutions start and put that uh, number in here. So this one here, solution start next page. It would pay for you to change this as well because you don't want it looking at the same as everybody else's. And then we need to go down to number four. See, we can see why these weren't showing up. So we'll lift those up to just below that. And we'll have a look at and we need to do these ones as well, the six, nope. So we're good here, so we'll save that. Now we'll go back to our software and we will compile. And sorry about the, the noise in the background, that's my washing machine trying to emula emulate uh, an airplane taking off. <laughs> okay, so let's look here. They're fine. The six up, we can do a little bit of um, changing here with the images, especially these top two can go up just a tad. So once again, let's go into the software, but this time we go to the six up sizing. And we want to go to the eight by 10 and it's images one and two. And we want to lift those further up. So let's try 60 and 60. Close this template. Go back to our data. Recompile. And then we'll have a final look to see how things are. Good. So the four up, I'm happy with that. And the six up, we could actually go lift that up a little bit higher again. So we'll close that, go back to our six up, and we'll go 50. 50. That may be too high now. Do all this by eye. But once you've got it done, set up, then you never have to worry about it again. Right, so, yeah, I thought, thought so. Gone up just that little bit too high. Darn. <laughs> ah, well. So we go back to the six up. And this should be 55. Okay. So now we'll go back to the data and we compile. Yeah, I really do apologize for that noise coming through. Um, it's a brand new washing machine and they don't know why it's trying to emulate uh, you know, a Boeing 707 taking off. Okay, so let's have a look here. Very oh, good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. This one, number four could be adjusted, but you know, that's been real finicky. Uh, so now I'm happy with that, so we're not going to save it. What we're going to do now is because we've adjusted it, we're going to come in here and we 
want to remove the borders and the crosshairs because we don't need those anymore. We've done all our resizing and repositioning of the images. So we can get rid of those now. And there we are. So I'm going to assume at this stage that you've done this, you've done your customizing at the top as well. So now we're going to save it. And for the last time, compile. Yeah, I know you're going to think, well, I'm being finicky and there's too many times we've got to compile and, and uh, don't say and compile. But when, as I said, once you've uh, got it set up correctly, then you never have to do this again. And it's really hard for me to uh, gauge where and what you're, you're uh, going to put your images, the size and the positioning. So that's why we've introduced that. So that's really good. So again, I'm not going to say this because I've already uh, done my books. But there you are. That's how to utilize the uh, puzzle book uh, compiler. How to customize the puzzle um, PowerPoint templates as well, how to reposition, how to resize, and uh, oh, now the only other thing is when we go to save, which I'm going to go this way, okay, we can save. So in this case, I'm actually going to save this because I want to show it to you. Here's all my other saved um, demos, so I'm going to make this test five save it and then we're going to go into the software for the last time uh, where is it you on my desktop here now let's start it up right so here again as a right at the very beginning of this video so I'm going to open up the last saved um, template. So I'm going to click on that. That should open up the last. There it comes. And there it is. So there's the last one that I, I saved. So I'm going to close this. Now here I'm going to choose one of them that was saved. So this will actually bring up uh, the dialog box with all my saved templates. So I'm going to go click on test three. And there it is there. That's what I saved for test three. Wasn't much, but I was just playing around. So that just saves you having to re recreate um, you know, putting in the puzzle paths and the PowerPoint path of the uh, template that you want to, you want to use. So you could save these with each individual size of the uh, PowerPoint uh, for your puzzle book. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. And again, as I say, I apologise for the noise in the background. Um, unavoidable. So. I'm Ron Pumphrey. I'm out of here. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.